Good afternoon, Alison Terry here, and welcome to day six of our 13th birthday celebrations. Woohoo! It's fabulous, and what a treat it is to have an hour long demo. I'm afraid you're stuck with me for an hour. Um, right, so let's have a look what's behind drawer number six. Nearly said five then. There she is. There we go. In here I, I can confess I do know <laughs> but it's it's fab I, I love this idea it's a great idea and these are fabulous storage boxes so in this we have three amazing sterling silver charms we've got a heart a moon look at the depth of that heart oh you won't be able to see it so much in here the depth of that heart it's absolutely fabulous uh, a moon and I'm going to call it a disc but I actually uh, it, it that's the front side but I actually like that because I'd actually set something in that um, so you can use it whichever way round you like <clears throat> so the idea was um, to make something with the um, contents of the drawers now with clasps uh, with charms it's going to be quite hard for me to do an hour-long charm attachment demonstration um, you know here's slowly how you open the jump ring um, so what I decided to do was actually do different chains so we've got three different chains chain mail carriers of charms so you could use all these as if I pull that one there is that there we go so we've got a bit of chain mail we've got we've got a bit of chain mail we're going to do I've got two different types of chain mail, but we'll come to that later. We've got a basic rosary linking, which I think is the most delicate, beautiful um, charm. And when you've got your smaller gemstones, I know a lot of people struggle and say, well, I don't know what to do with them. How pretty is that? And how delicate is that? It looks great. And then I started jewelry making. I couldn't afford a lot of um, wire or materials so I made everything I made all my own chains and everything so I'm going to show you how to do a figure of eight chain um, with your own wire this is great if you've got a colored wire you've been using but you want to match it with the chain so you can make it like this or you could turn it into jump ring so it gives you two options so that's the plan and we'll see how we get on so I'm going to start off with the little um, gemstone chain it's, people say to me that um, 0.4 and 0.25 you can't use for chains. I'm going to show you you can. If I whiz this from here, can I whiz that? I'm going to show you how strong these chains are. Now I'm putting quite a bit of force into that. You can tell my fingers are going white. <laughs> right, that is strong. They are really strong the trick is to keep your loops small so i'm going to show you how you can make that but please don't shy away from using your gemstones to make a delicate chain because the wire is certainly strong enough that was quite a lot of pressure you're not going to put that much pressure onto a chain when you're wearing it and and to be fair if something catches it um it's going to take quite a lot to break it and if it's pulling it that much then you're going to want you're going to want it to break <laughs> rather than strangle you so so it, it it will have a tensile strength but it's it's not going to just fall to pieces so i've got some emeralds here these are uh, rondelles you can use um rounds rondelles whatever you like you can do it with um bigger gems smaller gems it works with all i've got some 0.4 um, wire this is um, a plated wire and I've tangled it up when I've wrapped it up there we go okay so <clears throat> I can break this if I do that I can snap it okay that shows you it has um, a frailty because that work hardens it but when you make a chain you're not re you're not doing that when it's when you're wearing it it's not having that repetitive motion so it is, you know, if I try and break it like that, I can't. I physically can't break it. You, you, you can see from the grooves I get in my fingers when I'm trying to do that, I can't break it. So it is strong enough. Please don't, um, don't believe the naysayers if they say it's not. I'm, I'm trying to, to hide all my <laughs> rubbish stuff from behind there because um, <clears throat> it's a bit messy behind there. So I'm going to 
trim off the top bit now when i make a rosary link chain why is it called a rosary link chain traditionally you had um a rosary um was a a meditation religious necklace um and they linked them so they were all the beads were sep separate and that's where the term rosary linking came from properly it's a wrapped loop so it's made with wrapped loops now when i do it i will feed as many gemstones as i want onto this you can add more but i tend to work with all my gemstones sitting on the wire and then i can slide them down because i find it's less wasteful um you're cont i'm continuously i'm just using the reel i'm working off the reel i'm not um breaking off little bits and then you have to trim them so i'm going to feed a certain amount of gemstones onto here i won't put them all on because obviously you're all going to get a bit tired by the time i've finished feeding a whole necklace worth on so i've got a certain amount of gemstones on there i'm going to add a few more there we go so we, we've got a good start now so we want to start doing the wrapped loops now the wrapped loop is one of the most basic um things you'll make in jewelry so i start off on this side i'm going to put my head uh, my round nose pliers on um, i'm going to pop them in now if you find um you if you want them all the same size which will give you a nice consistent finish you can either use a marked part so you would put on here um, something like uh, an indelible pen to mark and then you will be doing them in the same place or you can use um, these are a, a step baling pliers now but I find that the smallest one is quite big so if I had larger gemstones and I was going to may, maybe use a 0.6 I would use these pliers but because I've got the, um, the 0.4 these pliers um, and check on our website to see if we've got any there. The beadsmith um, pliers, they come, they're, they're called the Microfine um, Toolkit, and there's four, four sets of pliers in here. But if you look straight down, if I, if I hold uh, which one, there you go. If I hold it up, the actual tip is very, very fine. So it means you can get a really, really fine loop. And as I said before, the smaller the loop, the stronger the loop. If, if I make a big, I'll show you, I'll show you how, I'll just do a quick big loop, I'll go through making it in a minute, but if I make a big loop like that and put in an extra bit of wire, uh, I had a bit of scrap here, I've always got a bit of scrap wire, pop that in there and pull, watch what happens to that loop, it pulls out of shape, okay, so that will pull out of shape straight away. So. To make it, um, keep its shape, keep it its form, we're going to have a small loop. So I'm going to go almost to the very tip, okay? So first off, I'm going to bend my pliers. I'm just putting my finger there and I'm bending my pliers 90 degrees. Then I'm going to turn my pliers, you get this little kink, turn my pliers and I'm going to take that all the way round now. So I've now got this sort of, funny P shape, pop my pliers back in and I'm now going to wrap three times. Now the reason I do three times, I find that that secures the 0.4 or 0.25. If I was doing it with 0.6 or a heavier wire, I might only do two wraps because it won't unwrap. Um, but, but obviously this is softer, it's got less um, ability to hold its shape under pressure. So. The more wraps you do, the less likely it is to open. So I'm going to trim that off. Now, if you haven't got any flush cutters, let me trim that off. Go in with a flat nose pliers or a chain nose pliers and just make sure that the end isn't sticking out. Okay, then when you've got that, slide down the number of beads you want in your groups. So. When, you've, when you start designing this, you're going to decide how many beads you want in your groups. I've done sections of three or four on the um, orange one, so I've just slid down four. It would come down to working out how many beads you've got. 
um, you can change it you could do it random if you want I would tend to keep to the same size I know these are random but that's just how I put them on so now I'm going to turn this facing um, towards me I'm going to put my pliers in I want them to be the same direction as my loop is there now where my pliers are is about the same size as the hole I'm going to bend that away and do the same again turn 90 degrees fetch it round get my little funny P again put my pliers in now the depth that I've left there and that's pure practice is about uh, 1.2 mil right why is that important because this is 0.4 wire so it means if I wrap three times round I've just got enough space to do my three wraps and then that gaps filled up so it gives you a nice tidy little wrapped loop now pop my pliers back in trim that off now, like I say with the flush cutters I don't have anything there but if not just go in with the tip of your chain those pliers and make sure there's no wire sitting up so there's our first little um, unit now we want these to connect there's different ways you can do it you could you could make loads of little units and then jump the, jump ring them together I like having them directly connected so we're going to pop our first loop back on pop it around then we're going to go all right do our three root loops You'll, when you start doing this, um, or if you already do it, you, people have their own ways of doing it, and I've just gone wrong. <laughs> Don't you love live TV? I haven't gone wrong. I haven't gone wrong. But if I'm going to do how I normally do them, I got carried away. So I'm going to create my loop. We're all, we're all human. Right. So I've created my loop. I'm going to stop there, because what I want to do is slide that one on. That's what I forgot. Silly me. If, I, if you do do that, it doesn't matter because what I could do is trim the other end, slide it down and then connect it. But that's, um, this is what I'm trying to show you is to do it continuously. I've now put my, fly, uh, my pliers outside just in that little loop there and I'm going to do my three wraps. So, one, two, three. Turn it over to get that snip it off slide down my next four so you can see I've, I've only taken off the very tip if I'd left it I have to leave some either side I've started this in theory and I'll do another one um, directly from where I cut off from the next one so I slide that down pop my pliers in do a twist you get quite quick at this now when you see a gemstone chain you can appreciate the work to make it viable as a commercial thing so i'm going to finish off my second one and snip there because it does take time each one takes time but you will find you get into a rhythm and it's the sort of thing you can do while watching the tv or you know you don't have to be concentrating madly on it except to make sure you connect them before you close the loop so i'm going to now start my other one so this is what you should do there's the cut end we start that pop our pliers in so we've got our little loop starting but we haven't closed it pop our chain on and so the chain just starts growing close that up and wrap it round so that's how you get your chain building directly you're not i haven't had to cut that um i'm only cutting it once if you see what i mean so i cut it at the beginning now but when I cut it at the other end, there's no wastage because I just slide the next beads, one, two, three, four, down. So we've got no, we've, we've got no wastage because this will cut directly. One, two, three. The three will give you a consistent feel. So I cut it there, but if you notice, I've not wasted. So all the wire I've done is wasted that little bit. If, if we were doing it, if I cut it both ends, then you, you double that. And I know it, it, it's not a lot, but if you start doing a lot, then it adds up. And, you know, the least you can waste, the better. So you just make this, as long as you want, you can make it into um, a charm bracelet for your wrist. For your, you could have an anklet out of it. You could have um, a necklace out of it. And you can attach your charm 
either by putting a jump link if you're going to have a single one but i would just attach my charm because there's enough room in these loops to just pop a jump ring in and then you can just add your charm to wherever you want so if you want to make it a full charm you've got these nice spaces to space your charms out it makes a cracking charm bracelet or anklet like that um, on the necklace i've just used the one in the center so if we if i do you want me to oh thank you paul um so you can see there i've added that to um i'm going the wrong way aren't i i've just added that with with a jump ring onto the bottom so that's our first chain right let's go to our next one so for the next one i'm going to do the figure of eight up here sorry that one um let me clear these off out of the way now this is this is pure just just chain it's just it's just um using wire um can you buy chains yes chains are getting much better we do an amazing range of tra trains on jewelry maker but sometimes you'll get a wire and you love the color but we don't have a chain to match the color or you want something a bit uh, chunkier or you want something a bit bespoke so how do you make um an individual chain necklace right i make these you can make these on a jig if you've got a jig you can set up a jig and make these and they're great um, i make these using again either a stepper baling pliers or my round nose pliers now i'm going to show you with the stepper pliers and i'm going to show you what i do as a trick to make it faster so if you want something bigger my, my these are ultra fine they're fabulous i love them for what they do but they've got a limited size so that's quite a small chain if i want something a bit bigger let's even just go to that one then it, it you can't do it on there and also this will give you consistency every time so i've got one mil wire i'm working off the reel it's the end of a reel but i'm working off the reel um make sure at the end i've got a cut mark so it's a chisel i want it flat so just flatten that off so we've got a nice starting place pop your plier pop your wire in you don't want it to show between between beyond you don't want it sitting like that because you won't get a good start so you want that end nestled between the two parts of your pliers then you're going to bend it round now different people have different ways of doing this some people try and do it in one turn some people do it in lots of little nibbles i usually do it in a couple so we've got our p shape to go now i'm going to turn that 90 degrees 180 hang on just done that way we're going to basically go the other way of the figure of eight so i'm going to pop that in and take my plier around now if you look it's kind of not joined you've got this sort of two s's that have co completed rather than a figure of eight so this is what i call rolling down i'm going to put, pop it back on my pliers and i'm going to roll that loop until it joins up so now we get the figure of eight turn it round to the other side you want to cut so you want them to match so that needs to be a little bit tighter when i rolled it it's come open a bit there we go so you want them to basically both be flush if you take your cutters and you cut you want to get it to to finish right where it's meeting that one so if you cut it there you'll have a gap if you cut it too far it's overlapping so you're almost cutting as if you're going to cut on that cross of the figure of eight but obviously you don't want to cut the lower one so a little bit of practice and you're just going to cut that and then you get your figure of eight okay great yes it will be a little bit angled yes you'll have to get a flat nose pliers and just squidge it then you get your perfect figure of eight that's great that's fiddly if you've got to do hundreds of those it's a bit fiddly you'll get a rhythm however right my my speed way of doing it you've got one it's the size you want undo it right you're losing this bit of wire now if you're going to do a sterling silver chain uh, um, necklace then do this out of plate because this is now trashed you can't remake that it will look awful get your flat nose pliers or a, or a wire straightener or, or um, nylon pliers and straighten it out get rid of all your kinks it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't matter if it looks a bit chewed that's fine you basically just want a straight piece 
of wire. Okay. Ow. Don't forget there's a slight curl on the end. Take that off. We're now going to use this as a template. So we're going to say that we know this is the exact size we want. We're going to now cut however many links we want out of it. Now, if you notice at the end, and especially if you have, um, if you have fl flush cutters, you're going to get this slight chisel at the end. So I usually trim that bit up, but you're, you're using a couple of millimetres, if that. So I'm going to pop that there. I must remember to put all those in the bin when I go. Right, so we're just going to cut enough of these. And again, if you've got spare bits of wire, if you've done something and you trim off the wire, this is why I never throw any of my bits of wire away. If you, um, you've finished wire wrapping something and you've, you find you've got, um, I don't know, that bit left over or even that bit left over, take it, you can get a couple of loops out of it. Get, get a storage box, pop, pop, you know, when you do it, just finish off, make your loop and then say, thanks very much. I'll put that in there. And when I've got enough, I've got, I can, I can do a chain. It, it, it just gives you um, time to make things out of what's effectively scrap. So, so if you sell your jewellery, this then becomes, this, this is a lost leader because it's just been used out of scrap. Yes, I've just used a piece of wire to do it, but as you've built up your scrap, you've just used scrap, so it's cost you nothing. It's a great, it's a great way of saving, of saving money. So now we know this is going to make our figure of eight. Starting at one side, roll it down till it meets in the middle. Yeah, you've got your meat in the middle. Turn it over. Roll it down. And then you've got your perfect figure of eight. So each time you do that now, you're going to end up with consistent, perfect figures of eight. You could even, if you were very organized, um, what you could do is take the size of this, have a little drawer or a compartment in your storage and say, this makes this size figure of eights, this is the length you need. So you don't actually have to make that first one once you've done it. And you can just, again, it's a therapeutic thing. You can just sit here making them away. You're not thinking about it. It, it makes stuff go so quickly. Once you've got a decent amount, I'm going to put another couple more in there. Oops. If you go too far, I went over there. I'm just going to open it up a little bit and tighten that. So you want it hitting that central point, not being um, either side of it. So there we go. Hit that central point. If you're doing this with sterling silver, of course, you can solder them in the middle if you want to have completely closed loops. Right, now we've got that. We want some jump rings. Now you can make jump rings to match. You can make them smaller. I'm going to go a size down. So I'm going to turn that round. You've got to have enough for those two to fit in. So if you look on the end of there, I want those two to be able to fit within that loop, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going to start at the bottom and I want the top that I want to angle it slightly so that I keep going to the bottom. So make sure that the, the, the open end is always above. So I'm just going to whiz that round because what that will mean is, can you see how it's sort of going towards the end of the pliers? And as you go along, that will then start falling off the ends of the pliers. And you can keep going forever and a day. It doesn't matter that the plier, you know, that's, that's where the pliers stop. It doesn't matter with that. Okay, so this will make you jump rings. If you've got a saw, you can saw, that, saw cut those. Um, I haven't got it with me, so I'm just going to use my flush cutters. The very tip of your flush cutter gives quite an almost flat edge. To get a perfect edge, you need to saw or laser cut them depending on what you're going to do with these, depends on whether you need to do that. If I'm making it for myself, I wouldn't bother. If I was doing it for someone else, 
I would make sure they're saw cut because I'm gonna I'll pick one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do a couple more. Uh, whoops. Come on. You should always talk to your wire and your and your tools. Right. So if you look, I'm gonna hold this up. I know they're quite small. These are flush cutters, that means one side is flush, straight, the other side will have a slight angle on it. Because it's the very tip, so you can see, that side of my flush cutters is, is flat, but this side is angled, you've got this angle. Right at the very tip, there is very little difference. So for my purposes, these are fine. So we've got our figure of eight, we're gonna make a chain. These make absolutely fabulous chains. You can link them like that. If you want, you can actually interlink them so that they go every other. I'd say these are a bit big because that's quite sticky outy. So we can link them like that with some jump rings. Let's open a, a jump ring. Let's get do it properly, Alison. So basic opening a jump ring. I, I have a bad habit of using my thumbnail to open them. That's how you should do it. Get your two pairs of pliers and twist away from each other. Never pull it open. Okay, so we're going to pop those two on there. Close that. And we have started building our chain. It's as easy as that. Charms can be hung from all of these places and it's going to look fabulous. You can hang... It's a sturdy chain. You can have a, hang a heavier, heavier pendant. You can put multiples. So I've got on the necklace on the example, I've put two jump rings in. So we'll just open another jump ring. And then we'll pop another, another one in there. So this, is, this chain has two going in. Open that up. And it just gives you a slightly different feel. Very little difference. But it gives you a different feel so that that looks slightly more um fancy shall i say than than just having one between so the other thing we can do with this is actually close them up like that and have a broader chain so if you want to make um an anklet it'd be quite nice if you want to make a choker it would look lovely um or a bracelet so again we're just going to go in and add i'm going to keep to the two now this will drop so the 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 gem the um jump rings are below but we will be able to open it out i'm just gonna whoops open that next one in it goes make sure they're closed so what you want to do is have I'm just going to shake them down so all the jump rings at the bottom and then you can open the book and then you get this jump ring this this pattern so again you can make this you you, you are actually creating basic chain mail so again you can have charms from running from down any of these you can have gemstones so like we did the um where did i put it the rosary link you can actually connect these using your rosary links so you would just you would just do your loop to there and there and the same on the other side and then you can build up your chain that way so when you're doing these chains these will all work together so when we finished you'll have a whole host of things that you can put together um, and and do it and you'll start going oh well actually that's like two jump rings so i could do this pattern with it but it'll be held together in the middle you will start the, the possibilities are endless you can just keep going so that is our um i'm going to call it homemade chain like i say you can you can add two you can you can do a really thick cuff add jump rings there and there you can start building them up um it's great fun to do um yes are they time consuming if you had to sit there and make the chain and charge for your time and do nothing else it's not really viable I'll be honest as a bespoke chain though if you hammer these you'll get um, a very different luster on them they will be really super strong because once you've hammered metal and work hardened it it won't pull open as easily so it, it, it is stronger I mean as it is this is not going anywhere if I take hold of that bit and I take hold of that bit and pull 
that's not going anywhere so it is strong but you can um, strengthen this just by just by doing this will work hard on it um, but if you hammer it you will get a different sheen on it but like I say that now will be a lot harder than before and opening that then becomes difficult so have a play with that that's chain number two slash three depending on whether you have it that way round that way round or single or double so have a play with those they're great ways to start they're great again you can hang charms from them and um, obviously this one will take a heavier pendant and be nice the other one wants more delicate things so so have a play with those that's number two we're now going to clear up and move on to some chain mail so chain mail what is it where does it come from basically chain mail is um what it says on the on the tin it's it's wire chains that have been used in mail in armor so that's where chain mail comes from it it comes from your armor um how do you how do you add it together how do you create patterns there are a whole a whole host of different um patterns you can use so this has got a larger charm on it um, with slightly bigger jump rings this is so there are different styles of chain mail the a lot of them um a lot of the traditional ones were regional so you have japanese chain mail you have persian chain mail you have european chain mail byzantine chain mail some of these you'll have heard of um that we're we're in we're in um birthday week but we're also on the coronation the straps under all the um big beer the bear bear skin head hats or whatever they're called um, that's Persian that's Persian chain mail that's that's what um, their straps are made of um, very little chain mail is worn um, in the modern so, so most modern armies don't use it now they have Kevlar they have they have a lot of other modern materials um, that will stop things chain mail would not stop a bullet um, you know things move on however it is exceedingly decorative and people picked it up, started making jewellery with it in ancient times, and they've carried on. And it is a huge, huge um, genre of the jewellery making. Um, so this is, we're going to Japan. And so we're going to go to Japan. And this is, they're quite, the Japanese are quite good. Well, quite a few of the, the, the chain mails are quite good. This is called an eight in one. Now, why is it called an eight in one? Because you've got eight jump rings in one. It's, you know, it's what it says on the tin. You can do a 12 in one, that will give you a different pattern. You can do a four in one, that gives you a much open um, weave. You can do an eight in one. The, again, the permutations are huge, but it's what it says in the tin. It is one jump ring with four attached. Now, these are all the same size. Um, in this one, let me just double check, you have two different size jump rings. So you've got a larger one in the middle and then smaller ones attaching to it. When you pick this up, so when you lay it out, you can really see that pattern. When you pick this up, because of, because of the way I've done a triangle, it will drape. Chainmail is like, um, it's like metal fabric. It is just like, it's very, it's very mobile, it's very articulate. You can do whatever you like with it. What it won't do is hold any stuffing in it. Um, but it is, it is pliable, flexible. When you, when you think about um, ancient time and, and you come to the medieval period, you had plate mail. Plate mail was very inflexible, exceedingly heavy, exceedingly heavy to wear. You had all sorts of things so you usually had a male shirt and and um, a cotton shirt underneath um you can imagine the weight on that whereas the chain mail on its own a lot less a lot less weight it's not solid um so it gives you that bit more um openness right so we're going to do <clears throat> this one but i want to start by showing you if you look down the middle just that spine you've got one two one two one two 
So we talked about doing chains. If I pull this in, that one, two, one, two, one, two, sorry, there you go. We can see on this chain. So this is one of the most basic chains. The most basic chain you can make in chain mail is two in one. So two jump rings in one jump ring. So you have one jump ring, one jump ring, one jump ring. That's a chain. You've made chain mail, you know. Um, this is, this is a, a two in one. I think it's a very um, effective chain. It's a very strong chain that's not just one jump ring in another one. Um, so this is a great way to start. You can hang charms off it again. You've got the single ones. I would hang charms off each of the single ones and then the double ones kind of sit like that. So just doing this is a fabulous way to do chain mail. If I loop that round, you've got, you've got a necklace. Works perfectly, works great. Again, it's very fluid, you know, all that goes down into a tiny little place and you pick it up and it's just beautifully fluid. That's what I like about chains. Very simple, very easy to use. So we're going to start off with this, but this builds into this sort of thing. So you, if you put this together, you can see where this could go if you started adding up and turning these around, you've got different layers, you're starting to get to this. Right, to demonstrate this, obviously jump rings are quite small. I fetch out my little tub of big jump rings that you can see. It just makes life so much easier. So I'm gonna fetch this all out. It gives us different colors to play with. And it means I can open and close them with my hands, which is great. It's a lot easier uh, to show you stuff with. So we're going to open a section. Now, when you have um, jump rings, when you start, everything you do almost, whether it's wire work, whether it's seed beads, um, whether it's, uh, I don't know, embroidery, whatever you do to start with, when you're sewing anything, it all starts a bit messy, yeah? Whatever you do, you've got to get those first bits to secure things, and then it starts flowing. So you're going to start off, you've got to get through that pain barrier. Some things are very quick to go through, some things take a bit more time. So I'm going to open half a dozen of each of these colours. The reason, I mean, this is, oh gosh, I've had this little kit. I, I can't even, I got it from JM many many moons ago i might i might see if we can get some more they're a great way to teach um they weren't designed as a teaching aid but because jump rings are normally really quite small um it makes life difficult to try and show people your fingers are in the way and it's it's, it's not easy to show chain mail with with um small jump rings so we're going to open those let's have a few of each color and then we can move on where are we going? There we go. Let's have some gold ones down here. So we've got four different colours of jump rings. That's a good start. Having the different colours again makes life easier because you can see immediately what's going on. Um, and I get into the habit of just opening them. You can have some closed, some open. Depends on what you're doing. I always tend to have, I've got a little scrap piece of metal here. Twisted wire. It gives me something to hang on to. With these, it's easy. You can hang on to the jump ring. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be in my way. With let's fetch this one back. If I've got to hang on to that and try and hold it secure, a you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, and b even if I'm not doing it for demonstration, it's quite difficult to hang on to it. You slip in. It's in the way. Your fingers get in the way. So um, have a little twist. It's just, it's just a bit of scrap um, metal, a bit of scrap wire, and it just helps out. So two in one, let's do the basic. So we've got our one jump ring that will attach to our clasp. We're going to add two in. Now, when we add two in, I'm going to get some more. There's me sitting there making them all nice and closed. So I'm going to add my two in, but my next one's going to be one. So I'm going to pick up my next copper one and pop it in. So that's a closed one. So there's our one in one, our two in one, okay? But we're then going to put another 
there's our second one going in close that now we've got our two in one so when you pick up each of these gold ones i pick up are going to be my two each of the copper ones are going to be my one we'll ignore those open copper ones so i can pick up a closed one and go through that second closed one close my jump ring pick up a second one and go through right what when i pick that up what you have to remember is not to split them you want those two to lie on each other if you want close them when you're doing it if you pick it up the wrong way let me pick it up the wrong way what will happen is it'll twist so that's the wrong way so my, my um my jump rings end up twisted so i'm going to open that up i need to come from behind up and over and through or like i said if you lay that on top of that one you can just go straight through the both that is that chain in a nutshell so easy peasy chain to do if you've got a load of jump rings great if you want to do it in silver it works really well with small jump rings um, i'm not going to go into some, there's something called aspect ratio and what it is is basically how many jump rings will fit in another one so it's to do with your diameter of your um your inner diameter of your jump ring you'll if you start doing chain mail you'll hear people talk about inner diameter the outer diameter and the gauge so the inner diameter we want to know how many we can fit in there let's say you've got a one mil a one mil um thick wire jump ring if you've got a six mil in an inner diameter you should be able to get six why one mil wires in it that's going to be packed okay so that's your aspect ratio and there are ways to work it out there are different patterns different weaves um that are reliant on that inner ratio they won't work unless you've got the right ratio um <clears throat> some don't care the ones i'm doing today don't really care okay so i could put two and two it's gonna it, it, two in each they're not gonna bother they don't care how many there's plenty of room the same with this if the, if they're the same size you're always going to be able to get two in unless you've got something a tiny tiny jump ring and it's a massive gauge which you're not going to have okay so that's your start that's your that's your easy easy peasy right so now we're going to make this now this can be a chain but it's also a carrier so we've created this charm carrier me me little bambi's upside down do you guys remember baby sham other drinks are available i still think it's a it's a rose gold little bambi it's a baby sham isn't it um sorry i digress other other drinks are available it's been a long day it's been a great day we've got a fab day uh, and then i get to go home and watch all the coronation <laughs> oh you off to a street party are you ours is tomorrow we're we're having we're having a picnic in the car park i know it sounds silly we did it we did it for the um we did it for the jubilee um and the village hall we had a car park we the village hall wasn't big enough for everyone so we were in the car park we had um a, a silver band there we got a band came um you know a, a proper like a brass band but they're silver um and yeah we had a great time we were so scared because i'm on the village committee um i was we were so scared that nobody would turn up and we had must have been two to three hundred people turned up it was fabulous absolutely fabulous great atmosphere so we're doing the same again tomorrow and because we've got no pa guess who's got to shout all the announcements out <laughs> not that i've got a big mouth or anything right <laughs> okay so let's now do this weave so this is our eight in one our japanese this is the start of your japanese so if you've not done j chain mail before this is a lovely one to start with there's no flicking them over there's no trying to twist it's a nice easy way to start and um, you can do eight in two as well you can double up the center one we'll we'll keep it simple so we've got one we want to have eight in our first one okay so you can do it one of two ways you can take your first one 
and I'm going to undo this one off here. Come here. Okay, so you can take your first one and just go ahead and add two, four, six, eight closed jump rings. That's easy, isn't it? Done. Let me put you back on our little bit of chain. Okay, that's done. We've got our eight in one. Fabulous. From now on, you can pick up empty, closed ones and open ones. So we're gonna, now I've opened all those, I'm gonna move all those out of the way. And I'm going to fetch a load of closed ones out. So we'll work with both. It's just as well I've got loads of these jump rings. So you'll also notice on this top line here, we've actually only got six. That's because we've got nowhere to attach it. So at the very top, we're actually only having six in. But I always start in a middle one. I start with the four and then I'll add that low row afterwards because that gives me my consistency. I'm starting in the middle, the end ones take slightly less. You can lay it out. So if I'm, I'm going to do a smaller part of this V, so we're going to do, let's say three, three of the center ones. So we'll have our three center ones in there, okay? Then we're going to go, we'll have one either side so we get our V going okay that goes up to that level and then we'll have five at the top level so we're laying out how we're going to attach them so this center one here is going to have our eight jump rungs I'm actually going to put another row on top of there because it will make it a little bit easier to see there we go there's all our closed ones should have done these with jump so that one's got all eight that one's got that one, that one, that one, that one. So that's going to have all eight. This one is going to have two there and two there. This one's going to have two there and two there. Yeah, this one's going to have two there. So you're graduating out of it. This one is going to have two there, two there and two there. So if you're not sure, lay it out like that. That will give you a good V, a good drape. So if I hold that open again, you can see on that top line, you've got the four, then you've got one less and, and underneath, immediately underneath, you've got your individual ones. So we're on, we're going to be on that one. So I'm going to take that one out because I've already got it. So we want two to go up, two to go one side, two to go the bottom side. So there's our eight. I'm going to come down one. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go through that one. Now in this one here, so what I'm doing now, I want two there, two there, which I've already got, two there and two there. So I still want another eight. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, another six of my closed ones okay so i've got this one and i'm going to go two three four five six pop in our other two and close it so now we've got that sort of thing happening so we've got our two with our full one so we've done that one and that one okay i'm going to pop that one in there so I'm going to put the open ones to show where we've been. So we've got those two. We're going to add upwards. So we want two in there. We're going to do this one. We want two from there, two from there, and two from there. Okay, we don't need any going higher because we're not going higher. So we're going to take this as our top one. So we've got the two to go up there. We want two, two. So we need to add another four to it. So I'm going to pop that in there, pick up those. So that's my six, two, four, six. Close that down. So now we've got side by side. So now we've got all those going up that spine. Okay. So let's stay at the top. Let's stay at this one up here. We now want to pick up that one. So we want two from there, two for there, and two for there. So we want another six. 
Let's grab some more closed ones. Okay, so we want our next. So we've now got, uh, we haven't got that one. We've got that one, that one, and that one. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we've got those three. So we're going to go to this one. So we're going to take our open jump ring. This is where you have to make sure you've got the right one. So if you just pulled those two, we'd be in a problem because these don't match. So open them up. We want to go, if I put it that way round, we're coming two from there and we want two each side. So we know we've got two coming from here. We're going to pick up our next two and uh, we want two for down here and two for over there. So, and we'll have two bronze ones. Okay. And we'll pick up those two. Okay, so we've now got, if I hold that up like that, come here, you'll see it a little bit clearer. You can now see, th see this starting to create. So we've now done this one. We can open up that one. We're going to come down this way. So we've got, we want to come to here. We've already got two there. We've already got two there. So we only need, we want two from there and two from there. So we want four. So we're going to pick up another one of these copper. These two are to go to this one. So we don't want those. These two are to come to here. So we want to pick up that one and we want two for there, two for there. We've got two there. So we're going to go pick up our one, two, three, four new ones. Then we want our two from here, so we're going to pick up those two and our two bronze. That closes. So we've now got our next layer starting. And you can see that starting to create on there. So we've completed that one. We're going to go to this one on the bottom. Now this one needs two for there and two for there. Well, they've already got them there and they've already got them there. So all I actually need is my jump ring to connect them to. What you can do at this point, um, if you've got anything like, um, oh, the Naughty Do It All tool or a, a bracelet suspender, you can actually start holding that suspended out. So you could have that suspended so you could see it quite clearly where you're going. Obviously yours is gonna be smaller because um, you're not using supersized jump rings. But we now want to start on this level. So we've got that one, that one is there. So we want to come down through there and connect to this one at the bottom. Again, making sure it's the next jump rings in the line. We're going to pick up there, go through our jump rings there and through two of the jump rings, but not the outside two. So that is now that one. So we've now got our, come here, three layers. Now what you find with this, there we go. We've got our two layers all the way down to that bottom one. Okay, so let's add this one on the bottom. Well, that's down by my little bit of wire, which I'm going to take off. He's easy. All he wants is two that we've already got attached to another jump ring. So we want to have, we've got him to that side. We haven't got him, so we want the ones next to him. So we're going to go along there and we want to pick up these two jump rings and we're going to add on our last jump ring on the bottom. Come on, in you go. There you go. So that is now one, two, three, four that is our four and we've got our jump ring building so this is quite um difficult now to see so i'm going to flip to this one so you can see where we're at a little bit easier so that's taking you through the process of how to add them we're now at the stage where we're attaching all of these to each other so we're just looking for and if you lay it down once you've got those won't they they'll fall over so once you get to a stage you can now lay it out and see everything appearing in your squares and if you hold it out and it doesn't appear in your squares 
you can see where you've gone wrong. When you start doing it, I would recommend if you can, to have a different colour or a different size as your central jump ring. It then becomes easier to see. So you keep attaching all of them on and you can build this. So this one has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine across the top to, to make that chain. So you can see you've got, if I hold that up straight, that gives you quite a, hang on, let me, there you go. There's, what, there's a reason I wear, I wear two different colours on the tops because the black shows up and sometimes the pale doesn't. So that will show you how to create it. But as soon as, you, as soon as you lift that and you put it on a chain, you get this most amazing, gorgeous drape because the jump rings will move. And that's your, your, that's your Japanese 8 in 4. Again, it makes the most amazing. If you pop that on your hand and put your chain around, it does an amazing hand to, um, you could put that down to a ring and use your two in one, two in one, two in one, all the way round. An alternative way is start with your two in one. That's the way I've always done it. So I'm very comfortable with that. But if you're not comfortable with that, if you start with your two in one at the top and then you can work down it so you build your next layer. So you put your two coming down here to your next one, put all your twos along, pick up your next jump rings and start building it this way. So there are different ways. All these things, whether you're doing chain mail, whether you're doing rosary linking, whether you're doing um, wire, all of them you'll find everybody does them slightly differently. And what you do is you start following someone's way of doing it and go, okay, that, that works for me or no I'm finding that a bit awkward if I hold it that way it actually works better for me or I'm left-handed I find it easier to do that none of the things we've done today are dependent on whether you're left or right-handed you can use um it, it doesn't matter this looks the same from that side or that side or that side the same with this it doesn't matter which way around you have it they're all double-sided just do it whichever's comfortable for your dominant hand. So that's given you quite a few different chains to have a go at. Um, when, you've, when you've made something, send your makes up to um, the Wall of Fame and at studio at jewelrymaker.com and also send your makes, um, post your makes on um, the Jewelry Maker group, um, share your makes group and uh, just really enjoy having a go. If you need any of the supplies to go with your charms from your, bo from your box, go on to www.jewelrymaker.com and have a look on the website um, and see what, what, what you need to get. They should have most things. They'll have wire on there. They'll, they'll have jump rings on there. Um, they'll, they'll have gemstones on there. So anything you want to add to add those charms to it, you're good to go. So enjoy making. I hope to see some of your chains popping up and really, really enjoy your birthday box. And don't forget, we've got another seven days worth of it. Incredible. Can't, can't tell you how enjoyable it's been. It's absolutely fantastic. Enjoy. I've been Alison Tarry. Thanks to the guys who've been filming um, with me and we'll see you soon. <laughs>